Hey y'all, it's your girl Erin from E. Marie Eats. Welcome back to my channel where my pot's always clicking. Y'all been asking and now I'm telling all the juicy details in this uncut, step-by-step -step live video on how to achieve the most flavorful and juicy chicken. So sit back and enjoy. sharpening my knife before I get going. Maybe I should put on some background music. Y'all think I should put on some background music? <laughs> my, page, my page is straight food porn. Yeah, I guess you can call it that. I guess you can call it that. Now my knife is nice and sharp. Got my whooshed off here. This is my chef's knife. I basically use this knife for everything. Oh, wait, hold up. I'll be right back, y'all. Okay. I'm wondering if I should put some music on. What kind of music I should put on? Oh, I love you too, honey. Tammy Cammy. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Y'all want to hear like some 90s? I mean, y'all know. I'm not a kid anymore. Maybe I should put on some 90s R&B. Or do y'all want some turkey music? Like, eh, 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 eh. What y'all want? What y'all want? Huh? Let's see what we got. What kind of music y'all want? <clears throat> hmm. Let's see what's in this 90s R&B. Yo, they got Bobby Brown up in here. No, we don't want to listen to that. You know, maybe we don't listen to no music at all. We'll see. We'll see. Y'all getting up in here? Y'all getting up in here? So today is Sunday. I typically, um, 90s work for you. Tony Mark is 1989. <laughs> um, let's see. So I told y'all that I was going to make um, roasted chicken. I typically make like a nice big Sunday dinner. Today, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. I'm going to do roasted chicken. Um, and I'm going to do a couple other things, which you guys are not going to see right now. I'm not getting ready to go into all of that right now. But, um, you know, a lot of times I get asked, like, you know, how I make my chicken. And to me, you know, chicken seems like such an easy thing to make. But a lot of people struggle with it. A lot of people struggle with, you know, handling like the whole bird because um, it looks like an animal, you know, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Um, but it's, it's actually it's simple to me, you know, but. The one thing you definitely want to do is to make sure you season your meat really, really well. But, um, and I use things like onions and peppers. Like I have a nice yellow onion here that I've already started. Um, I started using it yesterday. I have a green bell pepper. I use green bell pepper and I use fresh garlic cloves. Um, maybe I can angle this camera down so you guys can see it a little bit better. You guys see that a little bit better? A little bit better, right? Okay. Alrighty, so <clears throat> I just, you know, get started. I uh, cut my onions in nice thick chunks. I don't slice it very, very thin because you're gonna bake it, right? So you want it don't you don't want it to bake down too too small. You wanna leave a nice rough chop is fine, nice thick chop. You guys see how thick those slices are? And then I just give it a nice rough chop. See how thick these are? Not, not small chunks. That's about a half of an onion because again, I had already started using that onion last night. And then I use about a half of a green bell pepper. I don't use the seeds, I take that out. <clears throat> hollow it out, that's it. So you just hollow it out, get all the seeds and everything out of there. Because um, I think that they get a little bit bitter when you cook them. So that's why I take them out. And again, I also do like a rough chop in the... Hey, hi, sweetie. Be safe. Oh, thank you. You too. Be safe. Everybody need to be safe right about now. But I just take it and I get a, give it a very, very rough chop. You guys can see that, right? Hopefully you can see that. 
And then I do the same thing with my fresh garlic that I have here. I try to use fresh herbs as much as possible in all my dishes really, but especially things that I'm gonna cook down. You don't have to worry about the garlic being chopped too, too fine. Cause again, you're gonna be putting it in the oven and roasting it. And to be honest with you guys, um, I don't stuff my bird. So these fresh vegetables for me is really just about making a nice flavorful stock. Um, I use my, I make my own chicken stock for pretty much all the dishes. Unless I'm making something that requires a lot of stock, like to the point where I have to actually go to the supermarket and buy some. But if it's something that just requires small amounts of stock, stock I always have some in the freezer because I make my own, I preserve it. So, and that's good enough. Okay. So these are the only things that I put in my roasted chicken. I have some yellow onion, I have some green bell pepper, and I have some garlic. That's it. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. I have my two small whole chickens here. This is the part that people get scared about. They're like, oh my God, a whole chicken. It's not that deep, y'all, it's not that deep. But I bet you y'all be eating that whole chicken. If I was to slice that whole chicken up, y'all would eat it, right? Now, I was gonna use, I bought around the holiday time, I had bought a brand new stainless steel oven roaster with rack. And I was gonna whip it out today for y'all, but nah. I'm gonna just use what I've been using. Let's see, get my old reliable out of the cabinet over here. I mean, it's still a roasting pan, but not as fancy smancy. Okay. I keep it in a box because it's just easy for me to store uh, without it getting all scratched up and scuffed up, so. Okay. So, I usually just season it right in the pot. That way the chicken is not touching too, too many surfaces. And they've already been cleaned. Whenever you handle chicken, you have to be really careful about what you're touching after you touch the chicken. It's very, very important to have food safety in the kitchen. We all know this, so I ain't got to talk about it no more. Okay, so I put a bunch of seasons in my chicken. Um, typically, before I started investing in this new company, Breast Cuisine Spices, I would use probably about 10 different spices in my food, okay? Now that I'm using the Brass Cuisine Spices, I kind of limit it. I still use things in addition to it, but not as many, okay? So I usually start out with uh, just a regular garlic pepper, garlic powder, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this right here is equivalent to a teaspoon. These are like my old Starbucks little scoopers that I've just, I use them on everything when I'm cooking. They're so not good and convenient and small. So I just start to season, make sure I get all the spots, evenly coat all the spots. Y'all see that wrist action right there? Y'all see that? Don't go downward. If you go downward, you're gonna get a whole, you're gonna deposit a whole bunch of seasoning in one spot. Then you're gonna have to start smoothing it with your hands and your hands get dirty now, you gotta go back and clean. Uh-uh, it's that wrist action. See, you just wanna get a little bit all over the bird, just like that, okay? And you repeat that with all your seasoning. You wanna lightly coat the front. And this, is gar this is black pepper. And I have it in these little containers. I get these from the store because there are certain seasons that I just use so much and so frequently that it's just easier for me. Like, as you guys can imagine, I cook a lot. <laughs> as I say, my pot's always clicking. So I cook a lot. So it's just easier for me to handle these. They're sealed, they're airtight, and they're really great for storing your seasoning. <laughs> this next thing here is good old Lowry seasoning salt. I'm sure many of you what was the name of the season again? Show it, please. Okay, I'm going to get to it, honey. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to show you. Because trust me, you need to have those in your kitchen, okay? They're amazing. This is seasoning salt. Going in with a little bit of that. And I know it looks like I'm doing a lot of seasoning, but that's because I am. 
Don't be scared, y'all. Don't be scared to season your food. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to be basting the chicken. It's going to allow the, the stock to um, have a nice flavor to it that I'm creating at the bottom of the pan. Then I go in with some oregano. I typically like to get freeze-dried oregano, but right now I couldn't find any in the stores for whatever reason, so I'm going to have to just go with the regular oregano. Sprinkle that all over. And now, this is the seasoning you wanted to see. Um, I forget your name. You wanted to see it. This is Brass Cuisine Garlic Pepper, um, and it's amazing. It's a garlic pepper blend, and I absolutely love it. Like, I buy this thing by, like, the buckets, okay? She's on Instagram, it's BrassCuisine.com, and it's at BrassCuisine on IG. I just restocked all my stuff. It's amazing, and this is the chicken seasoning. So the reason why I saved this for last is because, um, you know, I just, I feel like even though it's an amazing seasoning, I've already put so much flavor in it, I wanna just give that like as the, like the last topping on my chicken. And if you guys could see this, Look how heavily seasoned the chicken is. So I've used all the seasonings. I've put garlic powder, I've put black pepper, I've put Laurie seasoning salt, I've put brass cuisine garlic pepper, I've put brass cuisine chicken seasoning, and then I also put some oregano, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the bird and I'm gonna repeat the same process. my hands a million times in the kitchen people are, oh e you don't have on gloves for what gloves for what so i can wash the gloves like come on it's not it's it's not, it's not necessary so we're gonna go and we're gonna do the same process all over again okay a little garlic pepper i'm gonna go a little, go a little quicker with you guys <clears throat> if i wasn't on live with you guys this bird would already be in the oven i move very very quickly in the kitchen very very quickly I already know what I'm going to do. I have everything already out. And that's another thing. When you guys are cooking, you know, I get a, one of the things that a lot of people say is, oh, my God, I hate cooking because it takes too long. One of the reasons why it takes so long is because you guys don't think it through, okay? If you take time to think it through and you go and you grab as many of the ingredients out of the refrigerator as humanly possible at one time, you will be amazed at how much time you save in the kitchen. It goes so fast. <clears throat> also... <clears throat> Create a garbage bowl. I say a garbage bowl? What's that? It's something that I learned from Rachel Ray. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Rachel Ray, but she's like one of my favorite chefs um, on TV. And um, one of the things she does, is she gets a really large bowl and she sits it on her preparation area, okay? And then as she's going through and she's preparing and, you know, opening things and throwing things out, she doesn't walk back and forth to the, to the garbage can a million times. She just throws everything in the garbage bowl. And then maybe like... Hey, Monica, what's up, girl? She doesn't She doesn't keep going back and forth to the garbage can. She just throws everything in that bowl. And then maybe every so often she goes. But you won't be amazed. You will save a whole bunch of time in the kitchen if you just think it through, have everything out, have everything ready to go before you even start. <clears throat> and all I'm doing, again, for those of you who just joined in, I'm generously laying in all my seasons. Remember, you guys see how my hand is? It's not up here. It's not up here. If you have your hand up here, you're going to put way too much seasoning on your chicken, okay? Your chicken, your anything, all right? You want to have your hand down real, real low. You want to be in control with how much seasoning you're depositing onto your food, okay? I don't know where I got that from, but I just learned it along the way, so just trust me on that, okay? Now, this is where it gets comical because I need to move the chicken out of the way. <clears throat> in order to put the wrap on it, so. But I think I got it down to a science. And I cook my bird breast side up, okay? <clears throat> and I'm able to, because they're so small, I'm able to put both of them in the same pan. And I like cooking it in a, in a roaster with the rack is you want air to be able to circulate around the bird. That's gonna allow it to cook better. It's gonna allow the skin to stay crispy. 
It's almost like you're aerating it and cooking it all at the same time. That's why I really, really like it. <clears throat> okay. So once I do that, there's a couple things. So now remember all the vegetables and herbs that I chopped up. I'm going to just take those, sprinkle those down in the bottom of the pan bell peppers, green bell peppers, the onions. I don't even think I'm going to use all those. I might save some of those onions for later. I have to cook other stuff too, so I think I'm going to make like some fresh green beans with some smoked turkey, maybe some mashed potatoes, some garlic mashed potatoes. I'm going to be posting some more food porn. Y'all going to be mad at me. <laughs> Y'all gonna be mad at me. Who are requesting to be in my video? Maybe we'll do that once I get it in the oven, huh? What you think about that? Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. You have a question? What question do you have, Tammy Cammy, so you don't rub them up? No, I don't. I don't rub it. Mm-mm, for what? I already put so much, so much seasoning up in that bird. They're good. All right, and then I go in. Hey, crazy about cakes. I go in with the garlic, the fresh garlic, put that in the bottom. And again, y'all, this is more so, as you see, I'm not putting it on top of the bird, right? Because what's gonna happen is if you put it up on top of the bird and it cooks, it's gonna burn, okay? And then it's just gonna look like burnt stuff just sitting on top of your bird, your bird. and you definitely don't wanna have that. So I'm doing that more so as a night natural flavoring, um, um, to, to, flavor, to naturally flavor your broth is what I'm trying to say. Because again, I make my own broth. So I put all that herbs and vegetables and stuff down in the bottom to help flavor my broth. And then I go in with a cup of water. <clears throat> about a cup. About a cup is what I put in. Um, I don't want the water to touch. You also have to remember that um, the bird has a lot of water and it's gonna create some of its own juices. And you don't want to have it where it's so much water that all your bird is really doing is steaming, right? There's like a fine line between steaming and cooking. You definitely don't want to steam your bird, okay? Go ahead and put the rest of this garlic in because I love me some garlic. I don't know about y'all, but I love me some garlic, okay? Y'all see that? And just when y'all thought I was finished, guess what else I'm about to do? This is, I almost want to call this a secret weapon, okay? And if you're not doing this, then you need to start doing this, okay? Because this is where it really gets good. This is a stick of butter, okay? I put, I sprinkle butter on my chicken, believe it or not, okay? It gives the skin that nice, crispy. I take that same cup that I put the water in. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the microwave real quick. You don't microwave it so long that it's hot. You don't want to put hot butter on raw chicken, but you want to warm it up so it melts and you can just nice, nicely sprinkle it all over the top. Okay. Okay. And help melt the rest of that because I don't want it to get too hot, but I want it all to melt. And then you just go in and you evenly coat it. Pour it slowly. You don't wanna to pour it too fast because if you pour it too fast, it's just gonna drain to the bottom and none of it's gonna to stick to the chicken. So you gotta be patient. Sometimes you gotta be patient with your food, y'all. You gotta be patient. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This is how I get my chicken like that. Now I know y'all have been on my page and y'all see my chicken. And y'all be like, oh my God, that chicken looks so deli This is what I be up in here doing. So trust me on this. If you do your chicken like this, you won't have no problems. Okay? Good to the last drop. And just because, just because I'm always extra ridiculous, I'm about to pop a little bit more. This is a chicken, brass cuisine, chicken season. I'm just going to throw a little bit more of that. Just on top, just to make me feel better about this whole situation, okay? Now, what I do is I cook my chicken for about, 
I don't know, I cover it up. I completely cover it up, okay, with aluminum foil. Um, and I do that because initially I do want to get like a nice little steam action going, right? A little steam action going, make sure it's cooking. So I do that at 350 degrees for the first hour, okay? Then 30 minutes, I cook it at 400 degrees, between 4 and 415, depending on your oven. I cook it still covered, okay? But wait, let me back up. Let me rewind because I'm going too fast. I get excited, y'all, when I start cooking, start talking about this stuff. So I pop it in the oven at 350 degrees, completely covered with aluminum foil. Make sure the aluminum foil is not touching the chicken though, because you guys might not have a roasting rack or whatever. You might just have a flat pan, do what you can, but don't let the aluminum foil touch your chicken. So have it completely covered, 350 degrees for about an hour. Then you go in, you check it out, you make sure that you still have enough juices at the bottom of the pan, everything is okay. At that point, I usually don't baste the chicken. Okay, because it's still pretty raw. I don't baste it. Then I put it back in the oven, but I crank up the temperature a little bit. Now it's still covered, okay? I crank up the temperature to about 400 degrees, and I let it cook for another 30 minutes, okay? Then after that, I go in, I check, I make sure everything is still looking amazing, looking good, okay? That's when I baste the chicken. I might take the oven rack out, but you gotta be quick about this because as soon as you open, the time you open that oven door, you're already letting the heat out, the, the cooking process is slowing down, so you have to be very, very quick and very, very meticulous. Me, I take the rack out, I baste, 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 I throw it back in there, I put it in. The next time when I put it back in the oven, I turn it up all the way to 425, 435, and I take the lid off, okay? Now, that's usually about 20 minutes, another 20 minutes to 25 minutes. You say, well, eat, God darn, you cooking all that. Listen, if you want your chicken to be good, okay? You can't just pop it in there for an hour and think it's gonna be all juicy and tender and moist and look like mine, because it ain't. I promise you, it ain't. You gotta have patience. This is the part where you gotta have patience. If you want some quick chicken, you need to fry it. You need to pan, you need to pan sear it on the stove. But if you're going to, to put your chicken in the oven, this is what you need to do in order to get a nice, flavorful, juicy chicken. Okay, so having said all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put some aluminum foil on this. I'm gonna pop it in the oven. Now, if y'all wanna hang around with me for a couple seconds while I do that, and then we can chat after, that's fine. But if not, I guess I'll check you guys out the next time. But this is what, this is what I be up in here doing, y'all. Y'all see that? Look how good that look. Look, look. look how good that look, okay? That looks amazing. All right, let me go get that aluminum foil. Oh, let me turn my oven on. I'm over here running my mouth and my oven not even on. <clears throat> I use the heavy duty one, the real long one, because you just cover it in one strip. That's it. I told y'all, we gotta make this, we gotta make this simple. I know y'all be in the supermarket saying, oh my God, it's two different sizes of aluminum foil. There's a thin one, there's a thick one. There's a reason why. I use the thick one when I'm cooking stuff in the oven. I use the thin one when I'm just covering up dishes and storing them. My oven is actually still already pretty hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in. <clears throat> now, the other thing, too, is put it on the top shelf as high as you can put it without it touching the top of the stove. The reason being is because heat rises to the top and it usually cooks better at the top instead of on the bottom shelf. There we go. And I typically, I'm usually in here cooking like a million things at one time. So I typically use a timer when I'm cooking because otherwise I would burn everything. It would just be like burnt, 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 burnt. So I use a timer. I suggest, you know, if you guys are new cooking to do that um, because it will definitely save you some food because if you're new and you don't really know how to cook that well, you'll lose track of time. You know, you guys are on your phones, you're watching TV, you got the baby crying. Uh, so you should probably do that. Um, I do it. Okay. So if I can do it, y'all ain't better than me. Y'all can do it too. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and start prepping my next dish. I already have my green beans, um, rinsed and ready to go in the in the sink. I'm going to go and cook those, but, um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Yes, I do live in Georgia. I do. Did you guys have any other questions for me before I go? Anything? Let me know. 
You got any other questions for you? You're very welcome, honey. You're very welcome. Make sure you come back and join me for the next one, okay? All right. Well, I guess if you guys don't have any other questions for me, I'm going to head out. Happy cooking. Enjoy your Sunday. Make something wonderful. And if you do decide to roast your chicken like I showed you, definitely tag me. Share it. Tag me. Share it in your stories. Um, and I'll definitely, I might, I mean, I might share it to my story. But if it look crazy, if it look crazy, I might... <laughs> If it look crazy, I might not share it, but I appreciate all the love. I love you guys, okay? Boob tattoo popping. Yeah, I need to get rid of that boob tattoo, though. We ain't going to talk about what it, what it says, but I need to get rid of that thing. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. As always, thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. But before you go, you know my pot's always clicking, so click, comment, and subscribe. See you real soon. Bye.